I'm Barb. I'm Dan. Welcome to our homestead. So this is our front entryway, our mudroom as we call it. We originally had built the cabin, so coming and going we can just shut her off, lock her up, and leave. Now you always think about security when you're off-grid, and we made this place as secure as you can make it. When it comes down to it, if somebody wants to break into your place, you're not around, they're gonna get in. It's just how much damage are you gonna do getting in. But the more you can make it look secure, we just feel the better about it. And we had just a open porch out here, but when we decided to live here in the winter time, we decided we need to enclose this. It's still in work, work in progress, but it definitely keeps the snow off the clothes and keeps the snow out of the house. We can come in this way. We usually keep it just like that for the winter time, but the summertime when we want more light, we can open up the other side too. So that's, that's what the chain's for. And this porch transforms completely in the, in the summertime. Yep. Coat hooks are... Coats are gone and packed away. We move the coat rack. Rockers on the porch. Yep, our rockers come out. And Morning coffee time, watching the deer and listening to the birds. It's very peaceful out here. We put a cover over the wooden rack because we don't need that in the summertime and that becomes a shelf. But in the wintertime, you multitask and that becomes your second refrigerator. There's Piggy. Ooh, I'm going to turn on some lights quick. We were always originally going to build a traditional home on the property. Pandemic hit and there's just couldn't get anything done. We said, well, we're just going to go for it and live completely off grid. And small. And small. Because things were expensive at the time, so we went small. Yep. So we're off grid, but we're also a very, very small, tiny house. <laughs> yep. Welcome to our house. Oh, it's so warm and cozy in here, you guys. It's cozy right now. A lot of times it can be way too warm. We have to be careful with our fire. Yeah, Usually we don't build them up too high, otherwise we're sweating out of here real quick. One fire in the morning gets it warm for most of the day, and then we start another fire late afternoon. Any more than that, and it's too hot in here. <laughs> you know, we have no place for a kitchen table, but this is the one thing we bought and didn't build. But it's a place for that we can sit together and eat at. But a lot of times, to be honest, we ended up... After she's done cooking, we sit in our swivel rockers there and relax. And when we're here, our wood stove is our primary heat, but we do have the, the LP gas uh, is set about at 58 degrees. So when we're gone for, well, we work fairly long hours, thermostat controlled, so you can set it at whatever temperature you want. The wood stove will not stay running that long. So that's sufficient to keep the place warm and keep things from freezing up when we're gone. When you add it all up, we have about 500 square feet total of space, but the indoor living heated area is 350 square feet. So a lot of what my design goes into building something like this is I built four traditional houses before we moved to Northern Michigan. And I just like to build what's simple, basic, rustic, and for ease of building also, that's another thing you gotta consider. You start getting too elaborate and it takes time, it takes money, and it takes a lot of know-how. Always something to work on here. So one of the requirements that Barb has is her kitchen. She loves her kitchen I and love even cook. she loves cooking and she's good at it. She has certain things that were absolutes and she needed sufficient storage space. So how do you do that in a 14 by 16 room? For her inside storage, we decided to come up with this here. The wall is extra thick and we just built shelves into the wall. So it's also the bedroom door. Yep. And then we have the pantry there and more pantry here. That is brilliant. But in a small space, swinging doors really don't work. They run into things. So we decided to go with just the sliding doors and use that for all her pan indoor pantry storage. So the biggest surprise for me is I don't feel like we're off grid. I feel like we have everything that we need. I sometimes forget that we're off-grid. <laughs> For all practical purposes, we are living the same as everybody else. We have everything we need. It hasn't been that much sacrifice, really. My kitchen is um, small, but it's fully functional. This is my off-grid refrigerator. It's a 10 cubic foot, 12 volt fridge. It runs completely off of our solar power. I am happy with it. It does need to be defrosted more than a normal refrigerator. So we end up doing that a couple of times a year. I have an off-grid stove. It runs off of a D-cell battery for ignition. 
and it's just a regular gas stove. That's my newest addition. I have normal hot and cold running water, regular kitchen sink. Um, we have an on-demand water heater outside. I'm not lacking anything in this kitchen uh, that isn't in a modern kitchen. I do need to be a little careful when I use some of my appliances. Um, I do have a Vitamix. I have an Instant Pot. I just need to make sure that I don't use them when the well is kicking on. So I will shut the well fuse off usually if I'm going to use those um, and make sure the generator is running at the time um, when I want to use those um, because that is a little bit too much of a power surge for our inverter. <laughs> Other than that, um, it's just a regular kitchen. I looked at lots and lots of pictures and we designed it just by pictures um, with the iron shelves, the open shelves, um, everything between that and the layout here and, and the cast iron rack. I really like that, that's my favorite. <laughs> and saving space with the hanging pot rack. I really is... love um, how high the ceilings are in here, you guys. Yeah, our was... posts our posts came extra long when we ordered our first bit of lumber. We did a post frame building. They didn't have the specific size, and I thought, well, why don't we go two feet higher on our walls? And that ended up being a great blessing. It, the upper shelf, Barb has her special ladder. She needs to get to those because they are quite high for her. You know, thinking ahead, she won't, she loves her cast iron, so we built extra framing into the wall and used that same uh, half inch black pipe method and we can hang quite a bit of weight on those. You know, as far as uh, financial aspects of living off grid, it, a lot of it depends on how big you want to go and how little you want to go. I mean, we were able to fortunately cash flow the whole thing. We bought the land with cash, we built it with cash, we built it at the speed of cash. And so we have no bills, but when you break it down, say, well, you don't have electric bill, that's awesome. But we paid seven grand for the system we have because we wanted a good quality system. So you divide that out by months, you know, it takes you a while to recoup it, but we never know when the electric goes out. So that's a big plus for me. I, I, I always hated that being out of power. We're never out of power. Um, we don't pay any heating bills, really, a little bit of propane, but we heat mostly of wood and yeah. It's very cheap living now that we're in it. You know, as far as thinking ahead, and it, it does good to do your research. Um, one thing I found out when I was researching solar power is that when you run things off of uh, regular power with your inverter, even when you're not running things, the inverter has a consumption itself. And we weren't gonna have that big a system. We wanted to be able to leave it for periods of time. And you save a lot of power by turning the inverter off. Therefore, all of our lights in the house, the refrigerator and the freezer out back, which we'll see later, all run straight off 12 volt. The only thing we turn the inverter on is when we use the outlets. So we turn the generator on, Barb's gonna use her Vitamix or use a KitchenAid or use her hair dryer or use any heavy stuff. We'll just have the generator on at that time, then we don't suck down too much power. But those aren't things we use all the time, so it's, it's not a big deal. Yeah. yeah, all the lights are all 12 volt. Um, we use 12 volt light bulbs. Everything's done on 12 volt. The only thing we need the inverter on is if we want to plug something into the wall. So we can leave and the refrigerator and the freezer just run strictly off solar when the sun's shining, off the batteries at nighttime, and it we can leave for a month in the summertime and it'll be fine. I don't buy anything unless I know how many watts it takes. When we originally moved in, we had to find a propane stove that was older, that ran only on pilot lights because a regular gas stove, even a modern gas stove, uses a lot of power to regulate your heat, to run all your buttons. Uh, and those were getting harder and harder to find. <laughs> and it lasted me about two years and it was starting to starting to fail a little bit. Yeah, so we ended old. Up, yeah, we ended up getting getting this one and I'm very happy with it. It works. Well it was on our nice. wish list, so we when there's something on the list we save up for it and when the time is right, we'll pull the trigger. We designed this entire cabin on, off of Pinterest. <laughs> well, and, and that's, different some, that's something different and special about the bedroom. We have 350 square feet of space, but we also very much enjoy our king size bed. So how do you make that work? We'll show you. So we got, ended up, we got, basically with the bathroom on here, we have a 10 by 12 room and we really enjoy our king size bed. So we figured out how are we gonna do that? We spaced out just enough. We just custom built a bed frame out of two by six. Bar, it's extra tall. That's 
barbs requirement. And then we didn't have room for closets, but then with the bonus of the extra 10 foot sidewalls, we decided the pipes worked in there. Why don't we hang our clothes on that? I mean, it's not the prettiest thing, but it, in the space you have, it does everything we need. We framed in our bathroom area. We had a specific dimensions. We knew we wanted a 48 inch shower, so we made it, we had 10 foot left. We made it a 10 by four bathroom and we just fit it in for that stuff. But we didn't need the ceiling nearly as tall in there. So I put a, a secondary ceiling in there and then Barb has all her storage up on top of there too. And this has been a priceless addition for her. I got her a decent quality step ladder that she uses quite a bit. This is the hook that we had to have made so we can get our clothes off without climbing on the bed. <laughs> this is our bathroom. Um, we have a 48 inch shower. Um, we have full hot and running water in the, in the bathroom as well. Um, we have a composting toilet inside and the cat box is also under there. <laughs> yeah. How do you put a litter box in 350 square feet that isn't stinking? Stuck it down underneath with a composting toilet. So our composting toilet system, we didn't, I never liked the idea of the expensive composting toilets and watching different people. Some people love them, some people hate them, but the simplest thing we've seen was the bucket system. Five gallon bucket system, we got a big barrel of dry sawdust outside. But it's only something we use for the lady of the house to use the bathroom in the middle of the night. Everything else, I go to the outhouse and all summer long we use the outhouse and the outhouse doesn't bother us at all. Um, so the shower is just a regular 48 inch shower. Nice and big. Um, we have regular hot and cold running water. That is uh, powered by the well and um, the pressure tank and then our hot water heater is right on the opposite wall in the shed in the back. It's an on-demand water heater. Sliding door, we had, that's a very new addition. It's still got to be finished when the weather improves. Price at the right distance and it can't be too big. Yep. This is another thing to think about when you're living off grid is your, is your lighting, but we were able to pick these security lights up and they run off of D-cell batteries and I only have to change them out once a year. But when you do want to use the outhouse at night, they turn on one by one all the way out to the outhouse so you don't have to carry a flashlight or walk in the pitch black. So having an outhouse, we, had, we decided, well, if we're using it, let's make it nice. So we made it a little bit roomier. We have the light on here, so it shines right nice and bright. And wintertime, we do add a heater to it also. We do have a small charge controller in here also, just one 12 volt battery for the light and then if we need to, there's an exhaust fan that we turn on also. We just dug a hole and built the house over top of it. Eventually, I planned it out. I got several moves I can make before we get too close. Yep, I built it on uh, four by six walmanized timbers and then it's built up on top of that so it's just so you can slide it forwards or backwards. What's your biggest challenge so far? My biggest challenge? You don't have my... laundry here. Yes. My biggest challenge is I don't have laundry at home. I still have to go to a laundromat. <laughs> I can hand wash things if I need to, but it's not ideal. I don't enjoy that. Depends on how clean you want to be. Yeah. My biggest challenge for me so far is the winter times. Just keeping this place cleared out. We're quite a ways off the road and just figuring out the best way to keep the snow cleared out and keep things functioning in the winter time. They follow me everywhere outside. So we have the back side of the cabin here. We have two solar arrays here. We have a total of 2,000 watts potential of solar power there. We did have to sacrifice some of our trees just to, when you're back in the woods, if you got trees and you got leaves, you don't have solar. So you gotta choose one or the other. It isn't fully optimal, but it works for us. It gives us the power we need. One of the other requirements that the lady of the house has is she loves her food storage so it's like how do we do a freezer off grid without taking too much power without taking too much power or taking too much space so we made this lean to over the back and this is a 14 cubic foot 12, 12 volt, volt freezer. freezer we have not had a problem with it taking in too much power and in the winter time it's out here it's frozen anyways summertime we got lots of sun so it runs off of solar during the day and the batteries at night and it hasn't been an issue for us mm -hmm. one thing in michigan we everybody knows is wintertime solar is kind of a myth kind of a, a legend it's not always there so we always we did go with a generator backup we have a dual fuel generator we like running that on propane um, 
when you're not using it in the summertime or you leave it for an amount of time, you don't worry about gas, it's propane, so you can turn it on, turn it off, and it's good to go. Well, that's wired right into our system. We have an inverter um, charger, so when we, well, in the summertime, when we do watering of the garden, that's well pump runs way too much for the system we have, so we can turn the generator on when we're wiring the garden and it has an automatic transfer switch and it just runs off a of generator power for the time we need to water the garden. Yeah, we about actually, this at And we have another one we as do. a backup. I like backup. backups to backups. Backup systems and even backups to backups is what I prefer. So back here, this is a lean-to shed, we call it, is the uh, houses our power systems, our water supply. That was the one thing I kept scratching my head over. How am I going to do water in Michigan in the wintertime? How are we going to keep things from freezing? So we have a regular well. We have a buried um, pressure tank supplies us back here. But what do you do to keep everything freezing when it goes up? Because there's no basement on this cabin. It's skirt board around post frame building. So everything, anything sitting there is going to freeze. So we decided to come back here with it. So we insulated this shed. It has its own separate heater. It's a much smaller one in the house. We have this set and it runs steady 48 degrees. It keeps us back here at 48 degrees all winter long. We have a frost free hydrant. So when I do need, when we do need to leave for a week I can, or whatever, I can shut that off, let it back drain, turn that off. I have a compressor here and I put in a line and I can have the water lines blown out in 10 minutes and the house is winterized. We have not had any regrets. We do everything ourselves and we run our systems ourselves and we're, it's just the two of us, so it fits us perfect. This was where we originally were gonna build a traditional on-grid house up in this area and we're about 400 feet north of where the off-grid cabin is. So when they put the well in, I had them run a pipe. It's about four foot underground all the way down to the well to supply water down there. One issue we ran into is we originally, when they put it in, we had them to water the garden. So they had a pressure tank above ground and they put a 110 pump in there. And we brought our generator up here and we'd turn on the well with the generator and water our garden. Well, that's not gonna work in the winter time with a pressure tank above ground. So what's the solution? Well, the one thing they can do is they buried the pressure tank. So the pressure tank's buried at the wellhead over here. And we, after they were done, I ran a line up from the cabin, a uh, power line, and so it runs right off our inverter to run the well. And we got really good water pressure, so it hasn't been a problem for us. Our original plans to build a house on a different area of the property, we've decided not to do because we didn't want this property to go to waste or this house. Um, we like the size of it, we're comfortable with it. We have other plans that we would rather spend the money on. We even had plans drawn up a year ago of a house we were gonna build up on the front of the property and we just couldn't come to terms with it. We had everything we need, we're living cheaply. It just didn't make sense to us to go and spend cash here and establish this when we're perfect. We can come to this property, we can leave this property. I can have this place winterized in 10 minutes and I'm gone. We just did not have peace with building a house. So our long-term plans are to stay here as long as we physically can. Um, we both worked full-time jobs. I think there's a lot of different definitions of life off-grid and life off-grid doesn't necessarily mean that you're not working. We live and work a normal life. For a few more years. For a few more years. So this is my garden. I think we're gonna put a hoop house on the back side. Um, we have a lot of fencing because we have a lot of deer problems here. The first year they ate everything. <laughs> we like to hunt, yes. Yes, and we have a, we have a, a 3D fencing system. We have um, five or six um, lines there, and then we also have an electrified fence that sits outside of that because the deer don't like the 3D fence. They'll go right through the, through the wires, but um, with the 3D fence, they don't like that, and it keeps them out. Um, I have a greenhouse that Dan built me. Oh, it is nice and warm in here. It's very warm in here. It's currently 70 degrees in here right now. It definitely gets about 120 degrees in here when the sun is out in the summertime. Um, yep, this will be the back side of the cabin. We had not originally planned on putting this here. We just kind of figured things out as we went along. This is only a 2,000 watt uh, inverter. We have um, 
the lithium ion batteries because we knew we wanted this to last for quite a while so we just decided to pull the trigger and spend the money on a good system right away. But even our well is a 110 well half horse and when that does kick on and it's running off the inverter I can watch what wattage it uses and it goes up to 1800 watts but it only runs for 30, 40 seconds, the pressure tank's full and it shuts off. A lot of this, I just watched a lot of what other people were doing. I figured this is what we need, this would work for us, this doesn't work for us, and we've had a couple upgrades. We started off with a smaller solar system because we didn't know exactly what we needed. We had 200 watts of solar panels, we had a 1000 watt inverter, and we had uh, six golf cart batteries. That was the system we used for the first fall. The biggest reward for me is figuring things out setting up the systems and it's like, hey, that actually works. We have everything we need. The biggest reward for me is the freedom. We don't depend on anybody for anything other than ourselves. I decided to, to pipe the wood stove out of the side of the house. That was um, just some little nugget I picked up from a guy named Bush Radical that said, I never like putting things through my roof. And I thought, you know, that's a really good idea, especially with a metal roof. It's just really hard to flash it properly. So we decided to go out the side and it's worked really good for us. We had to make an extension. A friend of mine had welded that up for us, that nice heavy duty extension so we can get it past the eave. But once we did that, it's been problem free and it's really easy to clean out. We originally started out, we had a 100 pound propane tank out here for the indoor uh, wall heater. We had another 100 pound propane tank on the other side for the cook stove and we were, had a separate tank for the heater out in the back and we said, why don't we just get a small tank and have it filled and plumb them all together, which has been great. It's an example of a progression of things. We needed some outside side storage. So it became an eight by 16 shed that was gonna be our wood shed. Well, it turned out that the wood didn't dry so well in there, I thought it would gap more since the wood was green. So it turned into a storage shed. And then we bought the side-by-side -side over here with a snow plow for our first winter. We needed a snow removal system. And I wanted a place to keep that out of the weather. So Barb said, after looking around at buying other building supplies and lumber was real expensive at the time, she said, well, why don't you just build a wing off from the storage shed? So we built this wing off from the storage shed and then I parked my side-by-side -side underneath there. Well, then come next spring, she needed a place for her maple syrup to be done. So she did her maple syrup in there and my side-by-side -side got kicked out. And then in the summer, it turned into an outdoor kitchen. her outdoor kitchen. So then we said, well, let's just build a wing off the other side. So I was able to keep my side-by-side -side and the wing on the other side, but now I got kicked out again for maple, the maple syrup. syrup again. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to find a new home for my side-by-side. -side. Wood splitter for us was a game changer. The first winter we here, we got behind times and we had a load of wood delivered. It came big, so after hand splitting some of that, we said, yeah, let's get a wood splitter, and that's been a game changer for us. Now we just harvest all the wood off of our land here. Well, and now I'm going to lose my shed because this is slated to become a chicken coop this spring. As far as all the work here, we've done it all ourselves. Yes. It's all, there's no plans. The plans were in my head. And then, you know, we watch a lot of other people, uh, off-gridders doing it, their YouTube channels, like, nah, that's not for me, but oh, that's really cool, I want to try that. And so you just keep experimenting and growing. This is going to end up being what we're going to call our little guest cabin. This will have a front porch off from it too. But the genesis for this was we wanted a place for that storage. So we just built the cabin over top of it. Uh, this is a eight by 16 root cellar, it's seven feet deep in the ground, but we built it with um, walmanized lumber. We'll see how she holds up. Very sandy soil here, so I'm not too concerned about it, but so far it's kept everything from freezing for the winter. And we gotta work on the lighting down in here also. So this is four by sixes on uh, four foot centers and then it's tongue and groove two womanized two by six and then uh, what's under the dirt I've wrapped with house wrap around there to further prevent any uh, moisture problems but we have to work on the ventilation issues in here. All right, we, we came up with this design because it uh, was sufficient amount of space for what we needed and it was out without having to put too much money into it. 
Um, I dug the hole myself with a bulldozer that I have, dug that out, ramped it out, and then had to do a little hand digging after that, put the post down, wrapped it with the two by sixes, and then uh, braced it all off, and then we put the cement floor in it. Well, most people want a root storage for storing root vegetables and preserving, but since we are limited on space on the inside, we, with all the canned goods, we wanted a place that was frost-proof. So once again, you could shut that door, close the place up, leave for five years and come back and everything should still be okay. Because when we left here for that winter when we had to rent, I had to take all of my canned goods out of the house and that was a lot of canned goods. Yeah, that <laughs> it was, was a lot, lot of work. moving. Moisture's been a little bit of an issue down here. Um, we did ventilate it, but it's been moist probably because we used the womanized wood. So it just hasn't properly on... dried out yet. Like I said, we finished it at close it in last fall in the rainy season and everything was quite wet when we did it so we'll give it some time see how it does and if it doesn't fix the problem once again you work on the next issue how do you solve the problems that's figure part of the fun a, of it figure out a better ventilation system <laughs> that's uh it's supposed to be the in you're supposed to have the in vent lower than the out vents right here flush with the ceiling I think once the cabin's complete, we'll put a pipe going up so you get some draft on it. My words of advice for somebody that wants to start living off grid is just try it. Get out there and do it. You don't know what you need. You don't know what you can go without. You don't know what you can get away with until you start doing it. We knew nothing when we started and we bought that cabin in the UP and we knew nothing about it and we slowly adapted and we learned as we went. And we found out it was fun. I enjoy it. It's <laughs> become kind of our passion. So when you're living the way you want to live and it, you're enjoying what you're doing, it just makes life that much better. Quiet, simple, and independent. There's something to be said about the simple life. <laughs>